welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie, otherwise known as the Vintage Academic. I am a junior transfer student at UC Berkeley studying anthropology with a focus in archaeology, and I make fun vlogs and informational videos about the transfer process, life as a transfer student, and sometimes some vintage clothing to mix things up a bit. If that all sounds good to you, hit the subscribe button to stick around for more UC Berkeley and vintage related content, and let's get into the video. So today I'm actually just here to film a quick intro and a quick outro because because when I sat down to look at the footage that I got, I didn't really do a very good job of structuring the video, so today's video is going to be a week of homework as a UC Berkeley student in the social sciences. I wanted to make this video specifically because as a transfer student myself, one of the most daunting things about coming to UC Berkeley was not knowing what the coursework was going to look like. I did reach out to other students and ask them what their homework looked like, and they just told me that it was a lot more reading. That answer uh, did not satisfy me, nor did it actually prepare me for what schoolwork was going to be like at UC Berkeley, so I decided to make this video to kind of show you guys what a typical week's worth of work looks like. Keep in mind that we are in a pandemic right now, so most of my professors have been a little bit more lenient on the homework, so it might seem like I don't have as much to do as I normally would. I am also only taking three full unit classes. I am in... I'm in History and Theory of Archaeology, Special Topics in Biological Anthropology, Race and Racialization, as well as Critical Mapping in Anthropology, Geographic Information Systems, or GIS for short. So, with all of that being said, I think it's time to just let the footage speak for itself. Hello friends, welcome. I'm sure that you just watched the introduction to this video so you already know what's going on. So you would already know that I am making a video about a week's worth of homework as a UC Berkeley student in the social sciences. I am studying anthropology. I specifically chose this week to do because I thought it was a really good example of a typical week's worth of work. So uh, just real quick, tonight it is Sunday, November 1st. We are on week 11 of the 16 week semester, which means we only have five more weeks left after this which is nuts to me because I feel like I just started at Berkeley. Anyways, <laughs> tonight I actually have two things due. I have what's called a reflection, so I just have to answer a couple of prompts based on the readings and the materials that we've gone over the past couple of weeks for my class race and racialization. And then I have milestone one for a project in geographic information systems where I have to give a topic and data proposal. So those are the two things I'm going to work on tonight. Then tomorrow I have benchmark three for another project in history and theory of archaeology. And for that project, we have to select articles to propose to the rest of the class. We have to develop discussion questions as well as give critical summaries of our articles. I have already chosen my article and created a summary, but now I have to create discussion questions about it. Then on Tuesday, I have class. I have race and racialization as well as history and theory of archaeology. And for that, I have to do all of my readings. I have multiple articles and I think a podcast to listen to. Then on Thursday, I have a lab for geographic information systems as well as more reading for race and racialization. And then last but not least, next Sunday, a whole week out from here, I have to have my final project topics and research questions developed for my race and racialization class as well as finishing Milestone 2 for my group project in Geographic Information Systems. So that was a lot. I'm going to go ahead and back it up a little bit and talk about the reflection and the milestone that I have to do. I'm going to switch to showing you my computer and we're going to talk about what the homework looks like. I also forgot to mention that I have two sets of mentor office hours for the Starting Point Mentorship Program as well as a YouTube video to put out on Tuesday that I haven't filmed yet. So let's get started with homework, shall we? I look like a right mess, but I have my study buddy with me. This is Lily. And... Yeah, let's just, let's get to it. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more about what Reflection 5 entails, and yeah, let's do it. So Reflection 5 was basically a mini paper. It was a chance for us to go back over the material we had learned in the past couple of weeks regarding race, health, and healthcare. There were two parts to this specific reflection. For question one, we had to identify a recent news or academic article related to the class themes of the intersection of race, health, and healthcare. We were required to provide a brief summary of the article and discuss who was involved with the article, such as the people, institutions, or populations that were concerned with the news story or academic study. Lastly, we had to reflect on this and discuss our own personal thoughts. It asked us if we 
we have a specific reason for choosing this article or if we think that it's especially important in any way. The second question asked us to identify an example or idea from the readings we did in week 9 that are relevant to the article I chose and why it's important, as well as to reflect on what can be done in the future by citing one of the recommendations from Bolnick 2019, which I will leave a citation in the description for, to identify what anthropologists, medical professionals, or other researchers can do to address racism in medicine in the future. I chose to use the article Bad Medicine, The Harm That Comes From Racism, published in the New York Times this January. It basically went over racial disparities in healthcare and attempted to identify the reason why African American men specifically have the worst health outcome of any major demographic group. I chose this article specifically because it approached this topic from a unique angle, trying to understand why these racial health disparities exist rather than just stating that they exist. I tried to link it back to the readings in class by drawing a connection between the distrust felt by many populations towards doctors and how that distrust has been vastly due to the Tuskegee experiment and the way that BIPOC people have historically been treated in the US in terms of healthcare. Hello everybody, good morning. It is Monday, November 2nd, tomorrow's election day. Hope you all voted. Um, it is about, actually, it's not good morning anymore, it's noon. <laughs> I planned on vlogging earlier today, but I have a very bad habit of not charging my camera battery. So I'm here now, but I did do a little bit of work already. As part of the Starting Point Mentorship Program, I hosted mentor office hours and I met with a couple of mentees just for a quick 15 minute question and answer session and to go over a couple of PIQ things or personal insight questions, which are the UCSs. But I still have all of the rest of my work to do today. So I'm going to vlog the rest of my homework and coursework today so you guys can see that. I have a group meeting starting in about five minutes for my geographic information systems class. We are trying to develop our research questions as well as finding some scholarly articles and creating an annotated bibliography to turn in. Let me tell you a little bit about the project though. We are exploring spatial relations in Tulsa, Oklahoma of the Black Wall Street District pre-Tulsa massacre, so like in the 1920s. That's all I know so far, but I'm going to make my to-do list for the rest of the day because I have a ton of stuff to do and get to that meeting. So I'm gonna make that to-do list and let's switch to the voiceover. So this is the project that I was assigned to. Like I said, it's investigating spatial relations of the Greenwood Business District, otherwise known as the Black Wall Street, before the Tulsa Massacre in the 1920s. And our professor is suggesting that we use this opportunity to become proficient with georeferencing, which I still don't know what georeferencing is. This is all of the information that we have been given, and now we need to develop research questions about it. And then this is the assignment for the first milestone. It's just a one-page document outlining the topic and at least two potential questions we would like to research and an annotated bibliography of three geospatial data sources and three scholarly works. But now I have to meet with my group to start discussing this project, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn off the camera while I'm in a meeting because I don't want people to think I'm weird, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so as you guys just saw, I was working on the Starting Point Mentorship Program emails that I send out to my mentees every week. This week we were going over resources that are available to transfer students and prospective transfer students, so hopefully those will be helpful to them. Now I actually have a meeting that I need to go to, and I'm going to get started on my readings next, so I'm actually going to take a bit of a break while I go to that meeting and um, film the YouTube video that I need to film that's supposed to go up tomorrow, and then I'm going to come back and continue doing my homework where I will be doing readings for History and Theory of archaeology as well as the benchmark 2 for my project which is submitting my proposed article summary as well as as well as discussion questions for the rest of the class to answer and eventually get to my race and racialization reading. Oftentimes for these two classes specifically I don't get to the reading until the day of the class but it always gets done so I'm gonna go take my break hopefully film a YouTube video and I'll be back when I get back to homework. Hello, it is many hours later. I think the last time I vlogged was three, it is now five. I have since filmed a YouTube video and I am now hanging out with the Redhead Academic. <laughs> it cannot see you, it is so blown out. Hold on, there it goes. I am back doing homework. I want to walk you guys through what I'm doing because that's what this vlog is, it's a homework vlog. So I'm working on benchmark three for history and theory of archeology span final project where I have to post my article summary which I think I already told you guys about, and then we are trying to develop one or two discussion questions as a group. So I have reposted my summary because my professor said it was fine the way it was, which I'm very proud of. Now I'm going to post in our group discussion to try and get that conversation started. Then I need to move on to my geographic information systems final project, and I just really don't want to, so I'm gonna procrastinate that for a little while longer. The article that I chose to talk about was titled Towards an Ecology of Materials by Sociocultural Anthropologist Tim Ingold. 
put it briefly, the author was basically making an argument for expanding our definition of materiality and looking at materiality in archaeology from multiple perspectives, not just from the human agents. This means taking into account all agents that affect a material, and while that includes humans, Ingold was stressing the importance of also considering the effect things like non-human organisms, water, air, and things like that have on artifacts as well. For my discussion question, I tried to find common themes between my article and my group members' articles, but I can say that it was much harder than I thought it was going to be. I also got through some of my reading for race and racialization, which focused on the intersection of race and homelessness. Good morning, friends. I did not vlog at all yesterday. Yesterday was election day, so I did a bunch of busy work and went to the polls and then spent the rest of the evening watching the election with the Redhead Academic and friends. Final results are not in yet, which we were expecting, but I still have work to do, so I am about to eat my breakfast. I just have some eggs on toast, drink my London Fog because I've recently gotten into making my own lattes at home, and then I have a meeting with my group project and I still have to finish the first milestone for that group project since I didn't do any homework yesterday. So that's the plan for today. And then I also have to do some work for my starting point mentorship program. So I'm going to eat my breakfast and go to my meeting. I also just want to point out to everybody that um, nobody's perfect and this was indeed due three days ago. Here I was finally getting around to doing my background research that I needed to do in order to actually get started on my GIS final project. I want to be honest with y'all and say that GIS is not my favorite class. I don't think GIS is my thing and I'm also not a fan of the way the class is taught. So if it seems like I was procrastinating working on this project, I 100% was. And I still am. So, I just want you to know that even Berkeley students aren't perfect. Okay, now it's time for me to do my annotated bibliography, which really isn't all that big of a deal. You just put the citation and you give a very brief summary about what that article is and why it's going to be useful to your research. I'm just not very experienced in doing them, so they always make me nervous. And in fact, the first time I ever did an annotated bibliography was for my classes over the summer here at Berkeley. So I had never done one in community college and the first one I did was a mere couple of months ago. So I'm gonna start working on that and I know it's I know it's really not that big of a deal, but it still makes me nervous. So wish me luck. <laughs> I gotta like not sing Fall Out Boy when I'm on camera because it's embarrassing. Hello friends, I thought I would take a quick break and run out to the barn because my mom's horse needs his supplements. We're not riding tonight, but still wanted to get out of the house, get some fresh air, get some exercise. If you're watching the study video, remember that you should take breaks when you're studying, get some exercise, get a sip of water, all that stuff. Anyways, let's go see the horse. Good, how are you? Hi, buddy. What's going on? Then my favorite horse, Hi, Jade. Then I finally got around to working on my GIS lab. It had a glitch, so I ended up having to finish it the next day. 
Don't ask me what it was about because I barely even understand how to follow the instructions for these labs, so I'm surprised I even had something to turn in, but uh, but if you really want to know, you can leave me a comment and I will attempt to answer your questions. And that is what a week of my homework looked like at UC Berkeley. This week was a little bit weird because I kept on procrastinating my homework for GIS. I didn't have as much reading for history and theory of archaeology and race and racialization as I thought I would. So I know I said I picked this week because I thought it would be very representative of what my homework looked like, but it was still just a little bit weird. But hopefully it still gives you some insight into what the work looks like as a UC Berkeley junior transfer studying anthropology, which is a social science. Whew, that's a lot of parameters. I know that this kind of content would have been really helpful to me as a potential transfer student, so hopefully you find it interesting at the very least and hopefully helpful. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, tell me what your major is and what your homework looks like, and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!